Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. How are you doing? We're back in the um, Bible series, going through the Bible. And uh, we're still in the historical books in the Old Testament. And today we're going to be looking at Second Chronicles. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 32, 24 to 26. So if you're still following along, I hope you're still enjoying the series. Uh, um, we're in the uh, historical books, and this is the... So open your Bible, please open your Bible, go to Second Chronicles. That's 2 Chronicles, chapter 32, verses 24 to 26. Second Chronicles, 30, chapter 32, verses 24 to 26. And we read, About that time Hezekiah became deathly ill. He prayed to the Lord, who healed him, and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kindness shown him, and he became proud. So the Lord's anger came against him, and against Judah, and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled himself and repented of his pride, as did the people of Jerusalem. So the Lord's anger did not fall on them during Hezekiah's lifetime. God bless the reading of his word. Pride, humility, and repentance. Pride, humility, and repentance. So just a little bit of background here. We're, we're still in the historical books um, in the Old Testament. And um, of all the kings um, that um, were uh, serving God and, and, and uh, you know, looking after the Israelite people, um, Hezekiah, King Hezekiah was mentioned he was a good king. Uh, well, not without flaws, I mean, you know, but there were not many uh, like him. Um, we think of King David, um, um, as you know, you know what is good, but um, let's say at least God fearing, right? But the rest, or, or, or uh, many others, were uh, involved in all kinds of evil and um, um, worshiping idols and pagan gods, and oh gosh, so many things. But Hezekiah was, in that sense, a good king, right? For lack of a better word, but a God fearing uh, king. And he does, uh, Hezekiah um, reforms, uh, he, he brings about uh, reforms, right? And basically um, a, a religious reforms, which are called to faithfulness, a call to faithfulness. He also restores the temple worship, which had been abandoned. And he reinstutes, reinstutes the important, the Passover celebration. So... The Israelites, um, you know, were called to uh, remember God's uh, deliverance, right, from uh, from Egypt, and uh, so um, that was done through the Passover celebration. So Hezekiah, um, you know, brings reinstitutes that one, that celebration, and he also has uh, idols and false god worship uh, eliminated. So. Uh, the topic here is um, basically what pride, humility, and repentance mean. For a very short passage here, and um, verses 24 to, uh, 20, 24 to 26, and there's a lot going on here. So when we read in 24, it says, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Well, um, he does pray, and God heals him and gives him a miraculous sign. Um However, um, uh, the, there's something about his prayer. The Bible doesn't tell us what it is, but um, that's not sincere. So in verse 25, we read that he's proud. There's pride in Hezekiah's heart. And so as a result of that, um, there are consequences, right? So which the Bible tells us. Um, because God doesn't... doesn't um, honor a half-hearted, you know, um, devotion to him, but only wholehearted devotion to him. So, um, uh, thank goodness, in verse 26, Hezekiah humbles himself and he repents. So it's very important, repentance. In other words, turning away from sin with God's help. 
And so the, um, the uh, impending uh, judgment that was about to fall on the Israelites, um, uh, uh, the people and King Hezekiah, uh, passed uh, by. So we see at this point um, not only that um, God knows all of our hearts, he knows when we're sincere and when we're not, but he also, show, it also shows his holiness and, um, and his anger that can be expressed at times, right? So, um, but it also at the same time we see God's mercy and, and God's grace that are revealed here. So a lot going on. I encourage you to read this passage and um, yeah, just think about um, what it means um, what pride, humility, and repentance actually means. The Bible has a lot of that to, uh, to help us understand. So what does pride, humility, and repentance mean for you? It means that we must come to God in humility and with a truly repentant heart, right? Not, not pretend or not God sees all things, God knows all things. Our Lord Jesus Christ knows everything. Past, present, future, eternal Eternally speaking, he knows everything. And so uh, we must come to God in humility and with a truly repentant heart, right? Not just, uh, you know, pretending to be repentant, turning away from sin, but with God's help actually, you know, putting it into practice, right? So we read here on this, uh, 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 turning to, that we must come to God and with humility and a truly repentant heart, in uh, as Paul writes uh, to the Corinthians in the New Testament, Second Corinthians chapter seven, verses nine to ten. Now I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. It was the kind of sorrow God wants His people to have. So we were not so you were not harmed by us in any way. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There is no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. God bless you as word. Very uh, very important passage and uh, something really to take to heart. So what is repentance? Now we ask, what is repentance? So repentance is basically to agree with God that we are sinners and uh, there's nothing good in us that can be redeemed. We are uh, uh, born uh, completely uh, sinful and full of evil and there's nothing in it by itself or anything that we can do in our own strength to redeem us. So we have to confess and agree to, to, to with Jesus. Uh, we confess our, 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 our pride to Jesus and ask him to help us to turn away from sin. Again, this is something only Jesus can do, right? There's nothing we can do, uh, say so and so many prayers, do so and so many rituals or anything. No, the reason is that um, Jesus himself is the author and perfecter of our faith. The Bible tells us that too. So in and by our own, our own strength, um, there's nothing we can do. Jesus initiates everything, all right? And he helps us. And so uh, one thing, uh, just as a tip, practical tip to consider, is when we are tempted to sin, which we often are, you, me, um, everybody, right? The temptation is there and comes in many different forms. Satan, the devil, uh, is very crafty. He must not be underestimated. And he always tries to, uh, attack us and try to lead us into temptation to sin against God. And so uh, here's some admonishment or and encouragement from Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Uh, it's a passage you may want to highlight in your Bible. It's really, really wonderful. So Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. God bless you with his word. So in other words, as you consider this passage, 
When you are tempted, look for that way out with God's help, with Jesus' help. He'll show you. So with every temptation, the Bible tells us here and promises us there's always a way out so that we can endure. So it requires right a heart bent towards Jesus and Jesus only. Acknowledge him as God in the flesh and know who he is. Uh, to, to atone, to die for our sins on the cross. And uh, that's where it all begins, to start. And so we can then um, uh, put this wonderful promise into practice and really look out for uh, when temptations come. Uh, what is the way out? Lord Jesus, show me the way out. So that's 1 Corinthians 10 verse uh, 13 there for you. All right. May God bless you and keep you i hope you're doing well these days and uh, keep the bible open always remember the best bible is an open bible please join us again soon